All right, we back once again. We're going to be talking about VIX expected ranges. So, uh, first thing you want to do is take the previous day close, which is about right here. So, forgive me if this is not perfectly accurate in this video as I'm doing it uh, while I'm recording it. But, uh, previous day close. Okay, so mark that. All right, that's always kind of an important level. Your open is important too, and the gap and all that stuff. But for now, we're just there's this little tiny gap in there, so we're not going to worry about it uh, for this one. Um, obviously, a big data day. Okay, the data comes out uh, right here, so usually at 8:30 Central. Um, that's when you'll kind of get the move set up. Uh, but for now, we're going to use the previous day close to calculate our VIX expected ranges. VIX yesterday. This might be a little bit different, but let's take what VIX was at. Okay, previous day close fourteen point five. All right, so that's our gonna that's gonna calculation is gonna be used here. So um, now that's the expected volatility for the next thirty days. Okay, which is a long time in today's market where you've got zero DTE. So I'm gonna show you how I've been kind of counteracting that using these gamma charts here. Okay, these gamma charts are gonna give us individual VIXs is the way I'm looking at them. So the expected one day, expected two day, expected three day, those kind of things. So we're going to just use the one day, especially on a big expiration. Uh, but for now, the calculation goes something like this. Say 14.5 divided by 16. 16 is the key number. I always use 16. And then it's actually going to be, if you want to get super accurate, it's going to be 16 point something, something, something. But we just use 16 and you just use the nice you know, round number here. We're just trying to get an idea of what the expected move is. Divide that by 100 and then multiply it by the previous day close. Okay, so you get 46.7 divided by 2, 23.3. Take that little ruler and measure it out here. Okay, so we got 23.3 is about right there. Okay, that's our high. And then we take the ruler, take the close, 23.3 to the low, about right there. All right, so now we got the market's 30-day expectation for volatility, okay, up and down. Now, this the reason I do it off the close is because a lot of times the market is only going to move essentially half the way before it reverses um, the whole way, which was that 46 Okay, that's if it takes a nice directional move. That's about the max you're going to get if it just takes off from the close and goes, right? From the close and goes. So 46 down. So you can use the full move or you can use the half move. Those are going to create these levels to trade from. Now, here's the other side of this. Now we got VIX which is the 30 day expectation. And then we've got our one day expectation of 27, 27, um, which essentially is 27%. That was, this is before the market opened. So instead of using 14.5, we're using double that almost divide that by 16. Essentially what that means is it's going to be double whatever the VIX expectation is, right? Divide that by a hundred times it by 51.575, which is the previous day close. Divide that by two, we get our, our expected range is up and down. 43 to the up, right? Okay, now we got some decent ranges to the upside. This is our zero DTE, or one DTE IV high, okay? And then, but that's the half move, right? So that's the half move. So you gotta remember that. That's the 50% mark. Then we got 43 down down for the downs and then or one DTE just mark it however you want it low okay so we got our VIX full move which is gonna you know just translate it to 30 DTE uh, low and then we got our now here's the thing 30 DTE here's the thing the market is always expecting more, even on the VIX, always expecting more volatility than actually is realized, than is actually realized. So here's what you want to do is you want to have your RVOL level in there, 
Yeah, I guess what was our vol? Our vol yesterday was 12. Okay, it's going to only calculate on a daily, but yesterday was 12. So we've got VIX at 14.5, and we've got one day being at 27, and then we've got historical volatility, which is realized volatility at 12. So what is our what is our implied and what is our expected for 30 days, one day, and then and I realize this isn't like this isn't like anything people don't already do because I, I already know people do it because the levels work so well. Um, it's nothing crazy, but I'm just trying to show you guys just a little bit of a way you can do it yourself. So our actual expected range is somewhere in here with this 38. Okay, so let's just take uh, that divided by 2. 38 divided by 2, we get 19, which is easy to do. Add that, 19. You're going to see how these RVOL levels work so well. So we're going to mark that. That's going to be our RVOL high. And you're starting. What I like to do is when I'm the whole process here is I'm pinning in my expectations based on the market expectations of 30 days, the market expectations of one day, and then what's actually been happening. Okay, so it tempers your expectations of what can occur. Uh, and the reason it's important for me is now I'm not going to be going and buying. I'm not going to be buying levels that are I feel like are too high based on what the market's implied and the history. And I'm not going to be selling those that are too low based on the same thing and you know, just inverse. So uh, again, we got uh, 19 up, 19 down to create our historical. So this is going to be our vol low based on a 12%. All right. So now we've got VIX high. So this is 30 DTE. 50% level high and this is 30 DTE and you're going to start seeing the picture come together here 50% low you're going to see the picture come together on how the market played out effectively um, so we got expectations for 30 50% plus R vol 50% plus R vol and then 30 DTE and 1 DTE okay full so 1 DTE, this is this is actually 1 DTE 50%, just to give you an idea. Which the market was expecting some crazy move, right? Some crazy move. Because if this is just the 1%, the 50% level, then the market was actually expecting a, a full 80-point move, 87-point move in a direction when... The market only oscillates within 40 points, 38 points to be exact. So if it were to continue to move in that direction like that, uh, that would be a significant outsized move. Now, now we combine it. So here's the market expectations. And now we're going to combine it with just some basic price action. Okay, some basic price action. Here's one sigma pivots. These are just the traditional pivots you can get for free on trading view okay and I've just only highlighted just the s1 and r1 which is just the one Sigma move I don't have the pivot point in here or anything I just want to get the outer bounds okay so price action wise you can see that the market would have to actually break the one Sigma to head to the two Sigma resistance okay and that would be starting to break some of these uh, upper bounds on expectations and then you got Sadie's ATR level, so I just used the one ATR, okay? All right, so now we got some bounds to, to trade within. All right, we couldn't even hit one ATR, okay? First off, you gotta break the one sigma to get to the one ATR. And what ended up happening was you got a good trade off the RVOL level, okay? Again, RVOL low ended up being near the low. And so now we got some some upper and lower bounds with market expectations based on options positioning and then also with our price action and what that does at least for me psychologically is it gives me some it's like it's like putting the uh, bumpers up when you're bowling all right i'm not going to be trying to trade like i'm not going to it's going to temper my fomo up here 
you know, you're trying to get long here. And I did, even after this, I had temptation to buy long here on a, on a breakout here, but I didn't. Why? Because I knew that we were outside of historical moves. Okay. This right here, this little area right here was outside of the ex historical move. And so was this. Okay. All that. And when the market is expecting something and you don't really get you know get the move that they were hoping for this is what ends up happening is this right here both sides get crushed both sides get crushed so yeah obviously people made money here that were day trading or you know you had some you know fancy option strategy on or something that was anticipating something like this but uh you know folks that were expecting 80 points in one direction right there's a lot of folks i know we're expecting 5200 okay you, you just knew 52 and 5204 right here is 5200 spx okay no people were expecting that so to be able to get there okay you're gonna need you're gonna need more volatility than what was than what has been happening of you know in fact volatility would have had to go up in order to to be able to get to that 5200 I know it sounds crazy but I'm gonna erase all this now okay but what you need if you look at gamma here you see the 5200s and zero gex right here where this line crosses the 5200s this is where everyone's options are I mean by and large I mean this is huge compared to everything else 150 million plus and then you've got only 50 million maybe 60 70 million on some of these other strikes so you get 150 million of gamma, and a lot of it is in the next couple of weeks expiring here. So if you can't get volatility to start, I'm going to show you what I mean. Volatility needs to be able to expand. Say the expected range here was only to, you know, what do we have here? We had our, our R vol, which is 78, which is like 50, 51, 74. So our actual expected ranges was like this. So 20, 17. So our actual expected range based on history was right here. So how can we, we got to be able to break that first, which we did, which we did, but we got to be able to break that. And then you're going to need volatility to actually go up. Okay the implied vol to go higher to start including to start forcing the dealer to have to buy back okay he needs to buy to hedge this area right but what's happening is as vol comes down as it comes down the market maker is inclined to sell okay it doesn't need the hedges anymore okay sell hedges for these areas and right here is the shift to positive gamma. If you can't even get volatility to include this area, all right, hopefully this is making sense, but if you can't get vol to expand to include those 5200s, which was 5204, yes, then this is what's going to end up happening, okay? This is what's going to end up happening. And this was something I was saying in the chat before, the market even opened as I'm doing all this and you know analysis and expected ranges and blah 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 which is nothing fancy but what ultimately was driving this all is you know vol actually needed to climb for us to go higher here's what usually ends up happening is usually we have some some big put positions down here that are are expiring right and so what ends up happening when vol collapses it collapses a lot more right or, you know, it doesn't go up enough. And what ends up happening is those folks get squeezed out. They get squeezed out because, one, they're closing their puts, uh, which causes the market maker to buy back. Two, the market maker doesn't need the hedges anymore because volatility is shrinking and the implied range is, is, is coming down. So then they start buying back anyways, which then creates a feedback loop. Okay, so now they're buying back their hedges, and then people start are forced to close their puts, which also causes more buyback. This is the inverse of what happened yesterday. Okay, this is what most people aren't expecting because everyone's sitting here in these 5200s and you know, and what what's happening is volatility. Let's just make this 
volatility. Let's actually do it like this. Let's use a box. Volatility is actually shrinking. Okay. As time goes on, as we get closer there, right? As we get closer, the market maker is buying, selling, buying, selling. The pressure is mounting. The pressure continues to mount until you reach sort of, um, you know, you, you reach whatever timing that we needed in order to sort of break it lower. Okay. So whoever, you know, whoever's the big guy that was sitting there, you know, they finally decide, okay, you know, I can't take it anymore. And then the market maker and everybody is now, you know, in a, uh, a sell mode because it just cannot help it. It just can't help it. All that gamma is going to come off. It's the same exact thing that happened with SMCI. Okay. It's the same exact thing that happened with NVIDIA. All right. And you know what? It's the same thing that happened with Apple. Apple was bearish into the whole week. Okay. And look how the expiry ended up. Right. They couldn't actually sell it anymore. Why? Because vol was vol for Apple wasn't going up enough for it to start including, you know, strikes probably like the 165. I'm sure there's people in those strikes like the 167.50. Okay. Which ended up being the low of the day. Okay, those strikes are falling more and more out of the money as vol is shrinking. So whatever the vol was for Apple, you know, as, as the day opened, you know, as time goes on, theta is hitting them and then vol crush is hitting it. Okay. And so it's shrinking, shrinking. Those are coming out of the money and uh, it's forcing buyback. Okay. So the same thing happened to the upside as well. Folks probably started buying calls. Okay. End of the day, same thing. It just wasn't enough to deal with the time, okay? As time is going on, let's just get a visual for time. Time is moving along here, which is killing your options to the upside and downside. And here's 172.50s, uh, which is probably the target for whoever was playing this. And then 175s, okay? Time is marching on, time is marching on. It's causing these to die. And then vol at the same time is shrinking, 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 shrinking. And it's going to take something to cause vol to flip and expand again. If vol were to expand to the point where it included these strikes again, then it would cause it to, to crash. It would crash through these levels. And then probably uh, hit its, its you know vol target to the low and then bounce again. So as time is marching on, it's causing those to die. And then at the same time, time is also killing IV. As long as nothing's happening, folks are just having to cover. So hopefully I've kind of put all put this all together where you've got the idea of your the market's expected ranges and um, also what's happening to the positions that are not within the ranges and how that is affecting the market and why we got this this uh, sell off yesterday it was nothing really uh based on the data or anything like that it was just all positioning and flows and the same thing's going to happen next week so just uh hopefully this helps you next week which is probably going to be bigger and bigger moves and more wild swings than we saw this week i would focus uh in on tuesday um thursday and friday those three days uh, to see something like this uh, start to occur. Anyways, hope you like this. Like and subscribe. Bye.